Hey, Scott Spears back with you on this Tuesday morning, June the 26th, 2012, 7.59 in the a.m. Currently 56 degrees and sunny skies here in Marion. Winds are currently calm. Humidity way down from where it was earlier on, 72%. Uh, visibility currently unlimited. Joined in studio by our regular Tuesday morning guest, 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow, and co-host this week, legendary comedian Gallagher. What a pair we have on this Tuesday morning. Uh, we're sort of the odd couple. You know what? If, if there were two people who were polar opposites in their careers, this would be it right here. Don't you, you we think? were talking about a time when I had a lot of money and you were in charge of a lot of money. You were yes. in charge of the money. And so that's kind of a common thing. You probably, when you were dropping that... Uh, 25 G's on that ring, Yeah, some of those dollars probably had Mary Ellen's signature on them. Oh, yeah. Now, were you there when they changed the money so that the counterfeiters couldn't counterfeit it? Yes, I was. Um, they hadn't changed the money since uh, 1928 or 29, and it was a big deal. I mean, we we had meetings after meetings about it. And uh, finally, it was released, and uh, then each bill, I mean, we started with the $100 bill, and then maybe a year later, the 50 and then a year later, the 20 and a year later, the 10 and finally, the 5 um, And it was exciting. Um, but did you ever have a meeting where they said, we've got to do something about this. We're having too much counterfeiting. Did a lot of meetings uh, precede that change? That's right. Really, that was before I got there. That was the Secret Service. Very concerned about the amount of uh, counterfeiting that was going on. And um, they had, uh, you know, a, a certain names for different uh, counterfeits that were out there. It was always very interesting meetings. They were interesting meetings, and they've named the different counterfeiters mm -hmm. by the type of uh, bill that they made or maybe a mistake that they would make on the bill. I saw um, a report on TV where this guy had learned how to counterfeit the bills, and he used two pieces of paper from a phone book. He found that when you, <laughs> when you came over that with that yellow marker, that it colored it the right way. Then he found that if he put the picture of the watermark between the two pieces of paper when he glued them together, it appeared as though the watermark was in it. Now, how he did the metal strip, I don't know. But he was so proud of the fact that he was able to handle all of the different ways that you put into the bill to keep a counterfeiter from counterfeiting and, then, and, and made a perfectly counterfeit bill uh, using telephone paper I guess I shouldn't be telling everybody on the I radio. don't see how he could use uh, telephone paper, though, because... It's yellow? No, because it doesn't have the right feel. You're, um, <laughs> you're, you're talking about 75% uh, cotton and 25% linen. I didn't know that. 75%, yeah. it feels like a garment. Yeah, cotton, it is. It's rag. And yeah. then 25%... Linen. Linen? Yes. It's a rag. Right. We all are using rags. Now, do you think, though, that money will be obsolete as everybody goes to an electronic way of uh, you just use your phone? You just go by at Starbucks, and you somehow they use their phone and put it on their... See, but I don't like that because I think you're getting into <coughs> the electronic voting machines now, and you see all the trouble we've had with that. Every time you go all electronic, yeah. things start to go downhill. Yeah. Then be well. Oh, you bought a cup of coffee for two dollars, but yeah. it rang up on your uh, receipt there for two hundred dollars. Yeah. That's not good. If no. you hand somebody a twenty dollar bill, yeah. you know you're getting eighteen back. There's all sorts of studies been done on that. It shows that people trust money the most of all. It's uh, the most trusted. Even above people. They well, trust no, I, money. I don't think so. <laughs> I think still people are <laughs> way up there. But uh, the fact that you have more uh, things go wrong with checks and electronics uh, than you do with the real money. But I found out that I couldn't go into the American Express office and put some cash down on my American Express credit card because they wouldn't accept cash 
at the American Express office. Isn't that What nutty? did you have to pay with? You have to uh, write them a check. What if it bounces? I don't know. I just they don't. They that, don't want the money that they that can that put out. in the drawer. Yeah. Well, on, while I'm on the road, I need my credit card to work for renting cars and flying in planes and buying rings. And so uh, sometimes I'm paid in cash, and I wanted to just put it down on my credit card because I can't rent a car with cash. This is another place that they just don't want to see it. You, you know, can't walk into the car rental with yeah, cash. Yeah. It's like pulling up to a gas station and they won't take hundred dollar bills i i think that i think there should be a law against that because it's it's our money it's the government's money a law against that yeah from a former treasurer well, of the united right. states well I, what do refusing you think? our currency <laughs> do you know why it is because they're run by people from a different country that could be you know, Mary Ellen, I, I know you listen from time to time. What did you think of uh, Governor Ventura yesterday? You know, I had to miss that. I was on my way to Columbus, so I, I didn't hear Oh, him. you went to our state's capital yesterday, and what mm -hmm. business did you have there? Did you meet with the governor? No, no, I didn't <laughs> meet with the governor. M my uh, husband had some stitches taken out. <laughs> oh. No, I'd love to see Mary Ellen meet with the governor, though. I would love to put a camera in that room when that conversation happened. Mary Ellen, have you heard about my statewide program to organize undecided voters because Ohio is a swing state, and if we indeed are going to decide the presidential election right. because the Democrats and the Republicans already know who they're going to vote for. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be the undecided. Right. And this could be as much as one third of our voting right. population right now. If they were organized, they could demand something for Ohio mm -hmm. from the candidate right. instead of giving them carte blanche. Here, go, here you go. <laughs> we're going to give you when well, nobody else gets something for nothing. What, what could we demand? What would be a good thing? A Honda plant. Oh, we've got that. I know. Well, well, we need another one. Don't they employ a lot? <laughs> that's where I got the idea. I mean, something that cr that's jobs. We need a jobs program. We, yeah. Look at all these secretaries of, um, I mean, uh, uh, all these plants, uh, defense plants in South De uh, South Carolina, and uh, because that guy from down there was uh, on the Armed Services Committee or something, and they, you know, they stick those... Um, uh, or look, we used to make our rocket go up from Florida, but it was controlled from Texas because the president was from Texas, and he wanted those jobs over there in Texas. Did that ever make any sense to you that the rocket went up from Florida, and then they switched control to the Houston uh, uh, Rocket Control Center or whatever? Well, Remember that? I do. Well, here's It's a all crooked. Well, it's all a bunch of politics, isn't it? What, why don't the voters get as crooked as the lobbyists? Jeez, There's our one <laughs> phone caller. We only have this one phone caller. They well, I tell you what, we're, no, this is <laughs> and they call in during. I'm being. And this is an important question. I'm asking a former treasurer of the United States about a statewide problem. We well, can't take a call now. Well, we have to. It uh, rang. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Go, go right ahead. This is Carol Neidhart, and I wanted to uh, thank your guest. Uh, the last time he was in Marion and played the Palace Theater. And uh, I saw him on the street walking down towards the Palace Theater. And I quickly parked my car, told everyone in the car, I'm going to go see Gallagher. And it was him. Introduced myself. He was very gregarious, very, um, very good. And he gave me some passes for his program to distribute to the folks at the food pantry that came in. And uh, for them and their family, to have a little enjoyment, a little fun, uh, even during bleak times sometimes in our lives. And he was so gracious to do that. So I Xeroxed uh, that. I asked him if I could make copies and distribute them at the food pantry when people came in. And I saw many of them attending the, the palace, and they just had such a great time. And that gives, when people laugh, that's hope. That gives people hope, even in problem times like we have. If you can laugh a little bit with your family and have a good evening or a good day, uh, that gives hope, and that's very important. That's a commodity we don't have enough of uh, in our country, but hope. And uh, he made such a big uh, mark in my thoughts. And he, he was also talking about Logan Tire, and they gave uh, some prizes away, and it was the best fund 
that we've had in a long time, and I want to appreciate, uh, I do appreciate that and so much. And I'm glad he's back in Marion, and uh, well, how does that happen? So thank you very kindly, wait and the, wait good the, to talk to you. Wait a second, Carol. Before you get off the air, I want to, we want to clarify something here. Uh, did you go to that show that Gallagher was at? Oh, you bet. Okay, now hold on. Now, now don't sway either way. Did he smash a watermelon that night on stage? No. There you go. I told I told the people yesterday he did not smash a watermelon, and they all said yes. And you even agreed with him. You said yes, you did. I told you, you didn't. Ah, no. No, no uh, you didn't. But it was uh, jam packed. It was just fun. But uh, our friends at Logan Tire, we we've laughed and laughed. And uh, they did a good thing with uh, helping with a, a prize. And um, it was so fun. He really was a, a very uh, erudite person. He, he has a, a good handle on lots of things. He's a thinker. Well, what about my idea of organizing the undecided voters? I'm going to start a uh, gang. It'll, it'll have a motorcycle gang theme, and so we're going to make a patch mm -hmm. so you can patch in and have this wear this patch. Isn't that fun? It's all about clothes. You know, a lot of people, they take up karate really just to wear those pajamas. <laughs> and uh, so I think it'll be fun to pretend we're in a... I'm having Celeste, that uh, that tattoo artist, to come up with our design. I can't wait to see it. I know it. I think she well, said I'm she. I'm glad you can pretend. But what about you? <laughs> Would you be <laughs> in my? Uh, have you already decided? Now, don't tell me who you're voting for. Oh, I just I, want to know if you've decided or not. What makes you think that people that can't commit, even at this time, that they will commit to a non-committal group? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm not saying we have to vote for the candidate okay. who gives us something. I'm just saying let's make them give us something because uh, we can't control what people do in the voting booth. Oh, right, right. Right. Well, I think it's... Um, uh, they need to think about Ohio. If Ohio decides the election, why wouldn't we get something special? Because we represent America with so many jobs in industry and in agriculture. It's not like an industrial... Uh, you know, uh, like Michigan, it's got mostly uh, industrial jobs, or Iowa that just has agricultural. We've got we're a kind of a combination of Michigan and Iowa, and we deserve something for it. Well, the reward is uh, be American, and that's the most important thing. Not if we don't get jobs. It's all about we need an overall national strategy for our economy. We can't reward people for leaving the country and putting jobs somewhere else or pay other countries uh, for um, – I've heard there, there's programs where somehow the, uh, a, a company in another country can be paid for putting our people out of business. I mean, it's just crazy. I don't get it. But I don't want to be president. And then another thing, uh, I think that all young people, before they get started with life, <coughs> they need to – have uh, a year of national service uh, boys and girls men and women alike and everyone needs to have a stake in our country and the ones that do get elected can't do it forever we've got to have term limits term of limits. something because they can't have a career as a representative you know that's the problem when they get so old and, that, and then they get so powerful on these committees and then they get all those like defense things I mentioned down in South Carolina, it's just crazy that there's so much defense, um, y you know, in one little state in the South because the head of the—I wonder who that guy was. <laughs> Do you remember? I don't remember. That. No, he got to be really old, and they kept voting him in because he was powerful. You just end up with roots. Well, well, you see, know, I think you can't get rid of these incumbents. I think Strom Thurmond was asleep that the was last it. thirty that years. Wasn't that him? Was that him? <laughs> no, he—he he was from uh, the Carolinas, wasn't yes. he? Yeah. Well, that's what we're talking about is uh, South Carolina. I thought Carolina. you were talking about Texas. I was. Yeah. Oh, it happens all around, but Ohio doesn't get enough. He was like 101. Yeah. Still in Congress. I know. Now, well, how effective <coughs> could he have been? <coughs> well, most of it comes from your uh, senators and your representatives in their uh, requests for in the bills that they put in. And That's another thing. That earmarking thing is ridiculous. How yeah. any politician can say they're going to... Washington to cut down on spending and then participate mm -hmm. in this ridiculous uh, putting up of statues and parks and roads to nowhere just because they want to stick it in the highway bill and, and, and we pay for it because there's just so much money floating around in that bill that they're not going to read it and put uh, you know 
They're selling the vote. If politicians can sell their vote, why can't the, the voters? That's what I'm saying. I know people will say you can't demand something from a candidate to, for the undecideds to vote, but it happens all the time. Well, lobbyists do it. Uh, lobbyists, everybody's doing it, but the stupid voters. We get screwed all the time. Can I say that on no, a? That's okay, but just don't say it too much. No. That's that's why we need national services. Our young people need to be educated so that they will not put up. Well, they won't like the government that they discover that we have. It's we just need ridiculous. To have government, but we need to have good government, and they. Uh, now, longevity, uh, Mary Ellen Withrow, uh, her uh, husband, I carried the mail to him to, so he could make his deliveries for his rural route. And I also worked at Elgin High School and, and uh, as an art instructor. And she was uh, kind of my boss on the board of the school board. She was our county treasurer. She was our state treasurer and then our national treasurer. What a good citizen she has been and delivering good service all these years to so many levels of our government. And uh, I want to thank Mr. Gallagher for being here and, and Scott for sponsoring it. And Mary Ellen, hello, and, and I'll give my mom regard, your regard. She's part of the Mary Ellen Club. My mother's <laughs> Mary Ellen also. Th thank you so much, Carol. So you, you wondered what we had in common, and it's this guy. It is. This guy is. He was very complimentary to both of us. He, even to me. <laughs> even to you. <laughs> even to me. I was well, very happy with he's it. He's really well, stretching. His, his, yeah, his mother's name is Mary Ellen, so we have a bond. There you go. Yeah. Yep, yep. Hey, thank you. And it's uh, do good, have a good day. And thank Mary you so Ellen, much. take care. Thank you. Mary Ellen, would you organize <laughs> a club of undecided voters? Wouldn't that be a good thing? Well, uh, no. I <laughs> I don't want to organize a group of un. Why? Uh, then you'll you'll uh, get something for your club for voting for whichever candidate well, you I, decide on. I tell you what, I think we ought to organize the Democratic Party better so that we get them in the Democratic Party. <coughs> and, uh, but then the Democrats will get what they want, and then the undecided people who joined with them will get nothing for it. You see, the undecided is one-third right now. They have as many votes as either one of the major parties. I so why join that. the major party if you're a major party yourself? All they lack is the is the organization. Well, what we get is is the candidates that we want. You, you know, oh yeah. See, that, yeah. that's well, what the we objective were is. Well, let me tell you what Obama just did. He just acted like Bush and a Republican with this thing about executive privilege. Why wouldn't the government want to, us to be able to look at all the documents and know what they did that was crazy? That seems just like a, the Republicans do, doesn't it? I was so embarrassed for the Democrats when he pulled that. I think you're right. Mary Ellen's not going to say anything about it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking uh, about. Well, the president recently, instead of giving the documents about selling those guns to the Mexican uh, drug lords just to follow where the, drugs, where the guns went has decided not to give the documents to the Congress and instead uh, call up uh, an executive privilege and say those documents uh, are part of the executive branch and we don't want you to see them. So why wouldn't he want us to see them? Because there's something embarrassing in there and it's an election year and that's just like something Bush would have done and the Republicans, right? Yes. Uh, you're, you're talking about the Attorney General being subpoenaed. Right. Yeah. Well... I Why doesn't he just give the documents uh, and be transparent? And if he made mistakes, we want to know about it. He's our public servant. He may be our public servant, but he has certain things that uh, yeah maybe are not the the way to go. Yeah, uh, that's mean, what we're saying. Well, I know you're saying that, but uh, I have always felt that they need to make the decisions on what should be uh, released and what shouldn't be released, and sometimes things shouldn't be uh, revealed. That's in the in the. Look, it was a crazy, nutty thing to give the Mexicans all these guns just to see where the guns went, and then one of the guns eventually kills one of our border guys. That's what we want to know about. It's the same as Ollie North running that operation in the basement of the White House, and we don't know about it. It's, they're out of control, and our Democratic 
institution here is should be run by the people and the people should have the final say as to whether or not we like what's going on and no secrecy and we want transparency in government don't i sound like a candidate yeah, but hold on but hold on but hold on how do we know if we haven't seen the documents that that's what's in the documents? Who has released Because this? we're old enough to know if they don't want us to see it, something's in there. Yeah, but how do we know that's what's in there? We, well, just show up. Well, I understand that, but th you can invoke executive... I'm from Florida. They have this sunshine law that you have to be able to see everything. Don't well, we, we, have we have that, that in everywhere? Ohio. I think we have that in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, well, every, everybody, we I think everybody has you the sunshine what, law. You know what, Mary, you turned into a politician just now. You, you're talking, you know, like you're in the in the administration, and you're giving excuses why we shouldn't see these documents. Well, I you di did. You turned from this jolly lady into this uh, politician that talks two ways. Uh, there's certain things that uh, do not need to be told <laughs> that go on in government. I'm not kidding you. Oh, I know. Yeah, and I uh, and let the judgment be whether that is released or not. There's a lot of things that uh, are not told to the public that, uh, that in, really shouldn't be. In totalitarian be. regimes, but this is an open democracy. Well, no, I disagree with that. I, I, don't, I think that's wrong. I don't it. think it is a totalitarian, because here's the thing. You know, for example, when President Bush was in office, yeah. um, he took away habeas corpus. Jesse Ventura talked about that yesterday. Yeah. Still has not been reinstated. Yeah. Why hasn't it been reinstated? We, nobody reports on that. Nobody knows anything about that. You have Fox News out here, which is mo watched mo by more people than any other news organization. They don't report anything. People don't want to switch the channel. Fox News wants to beat up on Obama. That's why this is a big story, as much as MSNBC wants to beat up on Romney and the Bushes. The problem is, is that Fox News has the bigger uh, audience, and they have the more money right now. If it were the other way, that would be the case, but it's not. Something very interesting was that when Bush was president, now we know that he sent a memo out right after September 11th and said, how can we wiretap people without being prosecuted for it? But we didn't find that out till long after he was gone. At least Obama has had the courtesy to say, hey, you know what? I do have it. I'm invoking executive privilege. I'm not going to show it to you because it is an election year. They will use it against me. Bush didn't say a thing. He didn't even say this existed. He just told us we were all scared to death because we were going to get bombed again. And if you don't keep me in here, if you change in midstream, we're going to be in trouble. My God, he attacked the Vietnam vet. Uh, a Kerry and made him look like a fool and Kerry couldn't come back at him because it was attacking the man who saved us on 9-11 at the time. And I, I think there is transparency in this administration far more than there was in the Bush administration. I think comparing those two is terrible. The number of press conferences Bush gave is so minute to the ones that Obama gives. At least he allows himself to be questioned. I've it, never voted. What? <laughs> I've never voted. You've never voted? Uh, no. Well, why are you giving all this information out about this, everything? It just wastes a good day off from work. <laughs> no, no. I just want a little so soliloquy what I there. Do. I'm sorry, but I had to go into that. Here's what I do. I find somebody that's going to vote the opposite of me, and we both go fishing. And that's it, cancels it each other out. Right. It doesn't change anything. They Certainly, they don't want me to waste a day standing in line. I just find somebody that's going to vote the opposite of me because I'm never in love with either of these candidates. Gosh, I wish we had some way of getting qualified people. But the goofy ones go into politics who don't seem to be able to make it in business, uh, you know, and they're all about their hair. Uh, you know, I don't think we've ever elected a bald guy president. They all have these. They're tall. Do you know that only 7% of the executives are over six feet tall <coughs> in the population but if you uh, in executive uh, uh, world 14 percent of the executives twice as many tall guys get the job at an office in the corner office just because they're tall or their hair is good it's ridiculous the way we the women run a business if you want something done, you don't call the boss. You call the secretary or you call people in the secretarial pool who know what's going on, right? And, uh, but they never run the country. They never run or, or they're not CEOs. Women have had the right to be the CEO of a company and, and break the glass wall for decades. And we've got like two, Carly Fiorino 
and that lady that was running eBay that's doing a terrible job over at Hewlett Packard now and is firing everybody as if that's some answer. We need more jobs, not less. A Hewlett Packard should be thinking of a new product that they can make, not uh, saying we, can't, we don't know what we're doing and we're going to quit. Well, I'll tell you this. I think women, and I'm going to make a big statement here, women should run this country. I was kind of saying that. I I was going to agree with you. I'm just saying that qualified people never run. They're always goofy folks that couldn't make it in any other area uh, because they have a name. Why would so many people who are related to somebody else that was in uh, politics be elected? The junior guy always gets elected. I think uh, there were one from Indiana, wasn't there? That that the, happens. That, that happens, but it's not always. It's all because they have a name and they're tied in with the party. You know, that's what it is. It's never about. They ought to take a test. There ought to be a test. If you have to take a test, as SAT, to, you know, to graduate from college or get into college or whatever, they ought to take one to. We get goofballs running, and we don't find out until after they're in office. And everybody always says, "Well, how long is four years?" Oh, gosh, we got to get rid of this one. Now, are we talking about... Any of them. They're all a bunch of nuts, aren't they? We never... Politicians? Oh, they never can... Ru- do they come up with dynamic ideas that make America a winner? No, they never do. They say do selfish little things that waste money. I, you know, I really resent that. Well... I'm a politician. Yeah. And you're really talking bad about me. And on, all of on them. the radio, I'm I've had a lot of good ideas that have worked well, and I want to ask you: Do you think that if women were in charge, they would go for tall women? Um, I don't know about that part. No, I, 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 I got to disagree with you too on this. I don't believe that every politician is is a crook and self centered. I really don't believe that. Who was at all. that Texas guy that had uh, EDS, electronic data systems, and tried to get General Motors to put electronics in the cars? And they he, they bothered uh, him, uh, he bothered him so much they paid him to get him off, and uh, and he ruined the election. But he really was the better candidate because he knows how to run a business. Ross Perot. Ross Perot. See, when you get a qualified, successful businessman as one of the candidates, they get rid of him, and they get some goofball that, can, you know, well, can't every do anything. I think in the Bush family, Jeb was the better politician, but he wasn't as friendly, the kind of guy you'd want to have a beer with, and so we went. And uh, George raised more money in Texas, and so money and name, that was the qualification to be president. But for him, but not for everybody. I mean, you, uh, gov- our last governor, Strickland, what name did he have when he came in? None. There was not a senior Strickland who was in government. Uh, you can go, uh, Charles Rangel, who's made his own name in New York uh, there. What was his name? His parents were in it, and he was African-American during uh, a time when uh, there was separate but equal. I don't think everybody comes in that way. I think grouping everybody is wrong. Sure, there have been the George W. Bushes. Sure, there have been the, uh, the Adams family. But I don't think it's always the case. What about that goofy guy from Indiana that was the vice president? Nobody really wanted him to be the president. But they all, Right. They only went with him because he represented the Midwest. And that, that's a silly reason to have a vice president, a heartbeat away from being in charge of everything. And everybody made fun of him. He was a joke. We had a joke for a vice president, but it made political sense. Well, I think everybody... There, defend ha- that decision. I'm not going to defend Dan Quayle because I do believe people thought he was a joke when he couldn't spell Well, how potato. could he be the second person on the ticket then? How how could Sarah Palin yeah. be the mm-hmm. second person on the ticket? Yeah. But I don't think right. that makes other vice presidents unqualified. So you say if Sarah was ugly, she probably wouldn't have been considered. It was I, all about being pretty. I don't know why she was even considered in the first place. I have no idea what he was she's thinking. Pretty. Did it help him? I don't know. Why he didn't is do she very still well. Around? She's still around and he's gone. Why? But what was her name value? She had no name value. Mm-hmm. Her parents weren't politicians. She had, But now she's the biggest star in the Republican Party. Right. And her daughter talks about abstinence and gets pregnant. <laughs> this yeah. is the kind of But situation. we love her. We love her in America. No, we've... We're just incompetent. I, I'm a f- I, I can't believe these other countries don't look at us and just figure that we're easy to beat because we're so silly. We're just we we uh, get in our own way. We have no national strategy for success like the Japanese and the Israelis. Their their government works with their business, not against it. Well, what do we do? We make it hard on the on the uh, on. The, 
I was in I when I ran for governor of California. I was in Iowa, and I couldn't sell tickets in De Mo in Dubuque. And they said because they're closing the plant in Galesburg. And I went there and discovered that they were closing the Maytag plant, and they were going to close the one in uh, the Amana plant in Iowa, but when the candidates weren't there. And here are these candidates running around talking about jobs. But who was really in charge of jobs? was the CEO of Maytag, who bought Amana and now has been purchased by Whirlpool. And luckily for us, I'm hoping Whirlpool is doing a better job than sending all those jobs from Galesburg down to McCallum, Texas, across the border into those Mercados. So I went down there and I discovered that they put the uh, hourly rate on the outside of the building and that the, the workers uh, work one day at a time and look to see what rate they want to get. And then is that any way to build a no, dependability wait a product? Wait a second. I, I want to ask you this. When Jesse Ventura... Say, I do research. But hold These on. These candidates don't even understand the economy. I don't believe that's true either. I really don't. They, well, why would they run around saying we've got to have jobs when under their nose? I went to the Des Moines Register, and I said to the editor there, this guy is going to close the Amana plant as soon as these candidates are gone. Why don't you mention that? This is a scandal. He's closed the Galesburg plant. It's hurting the economy so bad they can feel it in Dubuque. They said because uh, they buy newspaper ads. Exactly. I said, are your, is your editorial page for sale? That's, that's not a political problem. That's a media problem because media is making money now. It's an overall scandal that we don't have a strategy and that everybody's in it for money of their own thing and not the good of the country in general. Well, let, let me ask you this, though. Yesterday, we, we talked very seriously with Governor Ventura. And at the end of that, when we were talking about the airplane strike, I said, Governor, you need to say it. You need to be the figurehead. I even turned to you. I said, Gallagher, you need to say it. You need to be the figurehead. Yeah. You both said, no, 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 we don't need a figurehead. The stupid people right. need to get out. Okay, that's fine. And now, wait a second. Now, why do we have to put the blame on the one politician, the one man? Why can't the people uprise? If the people in that plant don't want it closed, they need to go pick it. They need to go to the paper. They need to write letters. They need to you take their money. You know what I money. did? I said, and it was at Labor Day, I said, let's explode a, a, an appliance in the, in the uh, town square for Labor Day. And the fire department wouldn't give us the permit, even though it didn't involve fire. It was just going to be air pressure. I had hired a... Uh, a uh, special effects company out of Chicago to come there because I understand the media. They would cover an explosion because it's quick and easy. You have to think about children when you think about the media, and they would like that. And they said, we don't want that here. And I said, it's because you have a job that's going to be paid for even if the, um, the plant is closed. You, you're the fireman. But the city is losing. And if you go to Galesburg now, you'll discover it's just a bunch of places for old people. That's the only industry they have is old people in houses and taking care of them. We've lost our, our industrial base there. And it's uh, the biggest city between uh, Chicago and, and the Quad Cities area gets blown away and nobody has anything to say about it. We don't have a strategy. I bet you there's plenty of times that you sat at a meeting and listened to these men talking and said to yourself, my God, they're idiots and this, this strategy can't work. But because you feel you are part of that party and, you, you know, and you're calling yourself a politician like the rest of them, you don't want to say that. But I know on the inside, I worked in many administrations. I worked for Claude Kirk, the first Republican governor of uh, Florida uh, after Reconstruction. And my job was to go around the state talking to college students who were working for the state for the summer and find out stuff because he had no other communications. No, but they were all Democrats in the state and weren't going to tell the governor anything, so I was a spy. Mm -hmm. I was a sp actually a, a hired as a spy, and I found out some really crazy, nutty stuff. When I'm not just you know coming up. I'm 65 years old, going to be 66. I'm not saying this after just a short study. This is, and I ch I'm a national person. I go to all the states. I hear all the problems. I know America better than any of these politicians that are running. If you have to tell people a joke and have them laugh, it's based on their fears, their religion, their prejudices, 
I know people better than uh, than a politician would. Now, hold on. Now, Mary Ellen, I want you to respond to that. Now, be fair here. Yes. Well, um, back to uh, there's been a lot said here. Before. Yes, it was it was a it was a big bundle. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm going to go back. Um, my question is, I, I think you should vote. Number one, you have all these feelings, and you're not expressing them. Only uh, right now you're expressing them, but you need to vote to. Uh, let your message be heard. And I want to ask about you running for the governor of California. Did you run for the governor of California? I got 16th. 16th. W- was that when uh, Schwarzenegger ran? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I, I'm very curious. Um, I, I'm really... <laughs> I'm really I got 5,000 <laughs> votes. A topless dancer got uh, 12,000 votes. I oh. didn't beat one of her boobs. Oh, jeez. Okay, <laughs> keep going, Mary Ellen. Oh, okay. Keep well, going. I have to allocate um, the time now. Now, now back to having sat in meetings where I I didn't agree with what they were talking about. If I didn't agree with what they were talking about, I said so. Um, I I think um, I think you really should get started voting and expressing yourself in that way because that's our privilege and, and you don't want to let that go. It's been ruined by the major parties by giving us candidates that are so tied into the goofy situation that we've got that it won't change anything. Voting is a uh, s- just a, a cover, a cloud, what is it, a smoke screen for making people think they're really participating when we're not getting any change or any difference. Earmarks is the silliest thing ever. If, w- if money is important to people, sticking in your local interest to build a statue or a road just because they need your vote to pass the highway bill is the most ridiculous situation, and you cannot stop earmarks. And it's stupid for both parties, and neither one wants to do it because they want to look good locally, come back to town and take a picture standing in front of the statue and tell them that they did something for the community. And all they did was all of them steal from the pot and cause taxes to go up. But now we... They've, go ahead, Mary they've done away with earmarks. I Oh, really? Well, they've tried to. Yeah. They're, they're well, worked. there's a lot of difference between tried to and done away. Well, I mean... Well, give, fill me in on uh, where the earmarks are right now. <coughs> They're in every bill that needs to have a majority, and they ask them what they want, and then they tell them the silly thing they want from their local, uh, their their district, and they stick it in. What do you think I know about earmarks for? Or, or the fact that after working for the government, they go to work for a uh, defense contractor and use their contacts than to have an advantage for the contractor. It's called the revolving door, and working for the government is just the beginning of working for a multi-million dollar company that uh, makes money from the government. That's a silly situation also. That shouldn't happen. There should be a law against anybody working for a company that does business with the government for more than like five years. They go almost immediately to work for General Dynamics, Lockheed, or something else. It's just everybody's at the trough. All the pigs are getting fat. And and it's it's finally hurt the economy. But how do you, when you look at a... Because we're going to talk presidential here because local won't make any sense for what we're talking about now because we are talking national politics. Mm-hmm. If we're talking about the presidential election now, yeah. that's going to come up in five months. President Obama... And I'm not uh, defending either side here. I'm trying to be as down I in the middle as I can. That's why I can vote. Uh, if I don't vote then nobody can say I'm partisan. But I'm ho- a comedian, and, a, and, and I'm criticizing both sides equally. But how can you, if President Obama does come out and say, I support gay marriage, if President Obama does try to get universal health care passed through the Congress and the Senate, yeah. if, if President Obama does kill Osama bin Laden, if President Obama does end the war to a better degree than anybody else did in Iraq, how can you say that he's the same as Mitt Romney, who on every issue there took the complete opposite side. We needed to stay in Iraq longer. We're going to cut and run. I do not support homosexual same-sex marriage. I do not think you're doing the wrong... I would not have went into Pakistan to get Osama bin Laden because we needed to get clearance there. I'm not a radical. 
how can you say they're the same? I don't think they are, and I think Obama is out. And certainly, well, Romney, I don't want universal health care. I had it in my own state, but let's leave that up to the states. We don't want it universally. How can you say they're the same? Because they're both ineffective. Uh, no matter what they're talking about, none of these programs are going to be um, uh, a reality. Well, it, it, right now, the, the health care will be a reality, if, unless the Supreme Court strikes it down. It won't be a reality if we discover, after instigating it, it was so doggone expensive. Right now, 15% of our GDP is paid uh, for Medicare. They predict as high as 30% in the future. We cannot afford to spend 30% of our gross national product taking care of everybody that's sick. But you know in social... It's not going to work. But you know it what may sound really good and make the paper and get votes right now, but it's not a long-term uh, successful... We have to pay off a deficit that we've run up recently borrowing, uh, and of course the Treasury would know about this, Borrowing money to pay off these, uh, uh, to save these banks and recapitalize the banks, we can't do that every year. There no, has no. to be years in which we pay more money in than we borrow, but or else we're going to devalue our, our, this is Greece's problem, is they don't have their own currency to devalue and cheat the people that the, have loaned them money, which is what we do. We borrow money from the Chinese, then reduce uh, value of our dollar, and end up not paying any interest to the Chinese. That's our game. But I want to want to say, and I want to come to Mary Ellen for some opinions here. But you know what they said? We had the Great Depression, 1939. By FDR's middle of his term in the 1940s, we had Social Security. The opposition ran against FDR saying, you're going to create a deficit. You're going to create a debt in this country that we're never going to be paid back. There wouldn't be a politician today who would say we need to abolish Social Security. And I think that's going to be the same thing with health care because I think premiums will go down because we have so much terminal cancer. But Social Security isn't a good idea. It's a dependent. It's made a dependent society. And people, it was only supposed to augment your retirement, not be your total retirement. And, and that's what it's, it's turned into. So can the government say that everyone who gets old, we're going to support you and take care of your medical bills? This can't, we can't, as the older population becomes a larger part of the population itself, and I'm a war baby, I'm part of that, born in 46, if the country can't support it unless its economy is strong and the government isn't run by people. Sometimes there'll be like one doctor who is, a, a, you know, because most of the representatives in the House and the Senate are lawyers. There'll be one doctor. Well, of course, he gets on the medical committee, and then they defer to him for every question having to do with medicine. Was it, isn't the head of the Democratic Party now a, a former doctor who... Uh, I think it's still Howard Dean. Howard Dean. No. no, it's not. No. Who is the head of the Democratic Party? I'm trying party? to remember. Okay. Yeah, but for <laughs> we'll a get time, to it. We'll but, find it. Uh, but that's an example. Howard Dean is a doctor, and so they deferred to him. Why wouldn't all the professions be represented in a House of Representatives? Instead, it's all lawyers. And so, but you who know, elects those lawyers? Well, why do we let lawyers choose our medical decisions or aeronautic decisions? Uh, you see, there and uh, McCluskey ended up uh, in charge of whether or not we uh, we uh, went to the telescope, the Hubble Space Telescope, because she doesn't know anything about physics. She didn't understand that to look further into space, you have to go into the infrared. And the infrared doesn't show you a picture. But she not liked all the pictures we were getting from the Hubble Space Telescope. So she made uh, NASA go to the Hubble and repair it, even though if you ask scientists what was the right thing to do, they wouldn't say to, to do that, because we ended up with someone who was not scientific in an area of, uh, of decision-making and power. And so we went and did the stupid thing. Mary Ellen, a lot of stuff flying yeah, around I here. Know. You think you're talking to somebody who hasn't no, hold done on, any hold research. On, hold on. I yep. spend all day reading. I understand. Hold on. Okay. I, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Pick a place and let's, let's try well, to find something. Let's go to the social programs. Um, I, I think that um, FDR was responsible for most of the social programs that we had. And I, I, I was around, but I wasn't uh, really paying a lot of attention to what was being argued there. But 
I'm sure that he had a lot of things to overcome to get those social programs through. And they have done a lot of good over the years. And talk to anybody that's um, uh, a citizen and, and any Democrat especially, they do not want to see the social programs done away with. I think that would be a big mistake. Well, I think you can't do away with the social programs. Did they make people dependent? Probably. But you know what? This is the United States of America, and I think the difference between us and other countries is we don't put our old people on the street. We don't put our uh, poor people on the street. We don't put our indigent on the street. Isn't that what we're about? I thought that's what the United States of America was about, that we don't turn you away. You know, love thy neighbor, all those things. Uh, sound good until you can't pay for it. I understand that we're running a national debt up. I have n there's no doubt about that. But the question is, have you noticed since FDR that the life expectancy has went from about 50 years to about 80 years? Have you noticed that old people now can go to doctors when they're in pain? They don't have to live in the street. That when people don't have family, they don't have to live in the gutter. That they can go into a retirement community and live on a fixed income. You know what? If we're in debt, too Social bad. Social Security is the f one of the times in which they bought the vote. They b People always vote their pocketbook. George Bush was in, uh, elected when he said no new taxes and was voted out when he came up with revenue enhancements instead of taxes. And Social Security is just a way in which people act like the lobbyists and the government contractors and want something for their vote. You know, we've had a lot of talk here. We're going to get somebody else's opinion here on the line. Good morning. You're on WDCM. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering if Gallagher might like to come and hang out at my place of work. Um, I'll give him some money and lunch and stuff. Why, are you guys going to beat me up? Have you been listening to the program? Do you want this guy sitting there? <laughs> no, we're not going to beat you up. We just think you're awesome, and it would be cool to hang out with you. Okay, what's your place? Uh, well, actually, we're, I'm not in Marion, which is a bit, bit problematic, I understand. But uh, I work for Huey's Audiovisual in Worthington. Huey's Audiovisual in Worthington. Yep. Now, would you like to advertise on our station? Uh, I mean, that's... that's are you a retailer? Uh, yeah, we do rental of uh, production equipment. Okay. Well, why don't you advertise? Well, in fact, we've just advertised your place. Now, if anybody comes in and says, we heard about your company on uh, 97 and a half, well, then we want you to keep a list and then, uh, and then advertise. See, one okay. hand washes another. We're in the economy, uh, right? We are. We're Republicans. Huey's, how do you spell that? H-U-G-H-E-Y apostrophe S, audiovisual. H-U-G-H-I-E apostrophe S. I-E apostrophe S. All right. I'm going to stay in town long enough to eventually come over there uh, and hang out with you guys for lunch. Audiovisual. In what town? It's in Worthington. Worthington. It's, uh all right, I'm in, I'm in favor of the single businessman uh, struggling against the powers in Washington and the state capitol to uh, tax us and put us out of business. Do you have any foreign competition? Uh, uh, we don't have any foreign competition, but we have a lot, a lot of large comp, uh, corporations that are competitors of ours. What's one of them? Uh, live Technologies. They're one of our competitors, so I would just like to say don't use those guys. What's it their helps. first name, the first <laughs> word you said? Uh, live. Live Technologies. Yeah. I've never heard of them either. All right, I'm going to make a study of your whole business and then make a report when I come over there. All right, that sounds great. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, caller. We do need to take a 30-second time out here. We're coming back 28 seconds. WDCM Radio 97.5 FM is proud to be supported by the Magnuson Hotel University Inn, soon to be a Best Western Plus, which is under new management, soon to be the home of a spa, fitness center, and pool, located at 2117 Marion Mount Gilead Road here in Marion. Telephone number 740-389-1998. Hey, Scott Spears back with you on this Tuesday morning, June the 26th, 2012. 
It is uh, 848, Mary Ellen, <laughs> with Row in studio with me. How are you doing, Mary Ellen? Well, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a morning, hasn't it? Boy, I tell you, we've heard how he feels about everything. He doesn't hold back. No. He doesn't he hold doesn't, back. He doesn't. But I don't think there's anything wrong with hearing other opinions. No, I think we want to hear other rep- uh, opinions. I, I respect other opinions. I always have. But, um, you know, he doesn't vote. That yeah. that bothers me. He has all these opinions, and he doesn't voice them in any way other than on the air, I guess. <laughs> well, you know what? We're going to take a call. Maybe this will be for all us. All right. Okay. Good morning. You're on WDCM. Good morning, Scott. Yes? Uh, I have a couple questions for both of them, actually. Okay, we have questions for both, both okay. Mary Ellen and Gallagher. Mary Gallin. Ellen, I'll go first. Okay, go ahead with um, Mary Ellen. Mr. Kasich just passed a new law for third graders if they fail their reading skill. He's going to hold them back for two years. Uh, first of all, I think that is a very bad mistake for children uh, of nine, eight, nine years old. Secondly, what is wrong with the teachers keeping them up to a level or giving them extracurricular reading to do? And third, they have always, and here in Ohio, I know for a fact, and here in Marion, there's been many teachers that didn't want the the black mark, if you will, put on some of their records. So whether the children were reading at level or math or whatever, they passed them on to the next year simply because they didn't want that on their record. And you can report on that. Mr. Gallagher, I'll just have to tell you this. I think you're a perfectionist. I can tell little things. You're also a person that likes to be in control, and that's a problem because most of us that want to be in control, we lose it, as you said, to higher power. Also, I think you're a person that's very creative, and I think little things just drive you absolutely over the wall. Um, I think possibly this may have led to some of your health problems because you're more than zany. You use an awful lot of energy. I've watched you on television before. But I also think that you're a man that is, you think, outside of the box. And I will tell you two things that I was told years ago. You do not talk religion. You do not talk politics. You do not talk sex. Because no matter what your opinion is, the other person could care less. And so we're fighting a war against the wall. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying that's just the way it is. I appreciate your time. You have a good morning. Now, I'm going to let Mary, Ann, uh, or Mary Ellen answer here in a second. Gallagher, just respond while that caller's there. She made some uh, personal references and public. I think she's an astrologer. You think? You think, yeah. that's, you think that's right on the money? Oh, yeah. Too much money, our, our energy oh, has oh, caused yeah. Oh, yeah. some health issues? No. I can't have anything to say she's exactly right. She's right on the money. Yep. Okay. Mary Ellen? I'm just trying to remember all of them. Religion, sex, and politics. Politics. Yeah. politics. Ma- Mary Ellen, <laughs> thoughts on Kasich and the third graders? Well, I, I really had not heard about that, but it sounds like being held back for two years is, a, is pretty extreme. Um, they do have to be able to read. You know, you can't go anywhere unless you can read. Uh, but I, I don't see how Kasich can do this. Did he sign a bill, or did it go through the legislature, or what happened here? I'm not aware of it. I heard a little bit about this. Haven't done too much research. He tried to put it through. I don't think it's went through. Yeah. The legislature, okay. I think, will strike it down. I think they will, too. You know too. why? why they that? haven't read the bill. <laughs> well, that could be. But you know what? Some they people They don't want to do. read. Some That's what's do. the problem with these earmarks. They're hidden in a bill that none of the... You can't tell me now, after your years in politics, that you didn't run across men who hadn't read the bill because it was too big and people, men in particular are too lazy to read. Well, I was never in the legislature. Oh. Uh, I was always running. The only thing that I was in where there were uh, other people involved was on the school board. And Mm-hmm. I would say that most of those people read everything that yeah, was going on. Have you seen this on TV where they teach kids to read at a much earlier age, that the, that your brain is ready to, uh, my baby can read. Isn't that what it's called? My baby can read. I and they teach them to read at two years old and before two. And the only reason that we wait till five to teach them to read is that's how old it takes before they're socially ready to be in a group at the school. But by then, their brain isn't as uh, receptive to a new language 
Uh, and you've got to blame the parents. I mean, how do they end up in third grade and the parents don't know they can't read? Yeah, Why well, do you ask true. a politician to do it's part of this entitlement where government does everything that's good. I, t I, t I mean why would people have to be told they can't have a great big drink and that all of this sugar is causing their weight problem that then we have to pay for with medicare and here they are you know uh getting diabetes one third i think are obese in america because nobody at school, you don't learn about your body. You don't learn about what's good for it and bad for it and how to eat and what are good foods. No, because our society is based on grease and sugar. You ought to be able to pull off to the side of the road and quickly go through the drive through and get grease and sugar that gives the kid a high. So if you say you should have some broccoli and they try the broccoli, it doesn't give them an immediate high, they, so they don't want it. They don't say to themselves, well, it's a, it takes a while to digest. They want high glycemic uh, vegetables like corn or carrots, you I, know, I, and then the kids say, I don't like it. What does that matter? What kids don't have any idea of what's good or bad, but in our society, they're in charge. Well, we're going to take a call. Good morning. You're on WDCM. Good morning, Scott, and the rest of the Motley crew. <laughs> yeah, it's been something I'm, this morning. I'm the king of the world. I know, Gallagher, and I'm only 65. I'll be 66 uh, in July. Uh, she didn't ask me my oh, astrological sign. You my astrological sign is Leo, and you that is the, the personality <laughs> that I have. I want to be in the spotlight. You I want to run take things. Care of everyone. Huh? I Leo's did. want to take care of everyone. I else. did for 40 years. I entertained not only parents but their kids, and I brought them on Wonderful. stage to smash food and realized that <laughs> they didn't know how to behave. They didn't. Uh, they were just wild Indians. Yes, I amen to that. I had two teenagers at the same time at home going to Harding, and I do understand. Now, Mary Ellen, yes, needs, needs, you need a break. Why? You, <laughs> I think Gallagher I, needs a break. <laughs> an even break. Yes, I don't need a break from this. Oh, Look, is okay. there goofy folks? Well. <laughs> now, of course, I am used to be a Republican. Now I'm independent. Oh, you want to be in my gang of, of undecided voters? We're calling it the Swinging Eagles. Now, of course, I'm, I'm a shut-in. I don't walk anymore, and I wish I could. I used to be a dancer, so it made me, like, mentally off. <laughs> but anyway, Mary Ellen has spoken in the past of a fear, and I know that fear. A fear of what? She could comment on that briefly. Yeah, I don't know what you're referring a to. A fear of what? A fear of something she didn't mention. There is a fear. The government instills a fear in us. I've had it. Well, I'll just speak of mine then. Well, I, I don't understand that statement at all. I like this. This is mysterious. I uh, wish it was yeah. midnight. Well, now, the thing is, the thing is, no, when the law says, okay, you cannot feed your children alcohol underage. I didn't. But since the one boy was involved, his dad was a sheriff's deputy, a very wonderful man, by the way, and you probably know him. And uh, But I was put in jail because I wouldn't give it to him. Now, there's a fear instilled in you at that point. I don't really call the police anymore for anything. And it's a fear factor, and I think that exists around here, and it's really something that needs to be done away with. But I love you guys. I love the show, and you don't have much time left. I know. Hey, Kathy, thank you. But thank you, and thank you, Gallagher, for speaking my mind. Well, I, I don't understand the fear question. I, I, I don't either I don't because I, I have not uh, referred to anything other than, well, I, I the only thing that's involved with fear is what the Republican Party tries to impart at every election. There's a lot of fear. Now, I will say that. I, I, I'm, I'm down the middle here. But you know what? The Republican Party does play more on fear than I think the Democratic Party does. They certainly do. I've never really heard the Democratic Party say, if you don't elect me, bad things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think they just try to get their point out there. I don't know. What do you think, Gallagher? Weigh in on that one. We always vote for the person because they're less of an evil than the other one. Right. The most effective campaign uh, uh, TV ads 
are picking on the other person they've discovered. You get more votes if you pick oh, on the other this guy. This is important. We're, we're getting Carl's plumbing now that okay. we called earlier. All so right. let's see if we can get City Hall fixed. Maybe we can get City Hall good, fixed. Good morning. You're on WDCM. Good morning. Is, Gall- is Gallagher around? Gallagher's on the line. This is Carl from Carl's Plumbing and Heating. Hi, Carl. What do you need? We need uh, heating and cooling in the City Hall. Well, yeah, I saw that in paper the other day, but that's not going to be that easy. Hmm. What's happened to the control man that was taking care of all that? Well, I guess uh, they, I guess they don't know how to fix the problem. But I did meet some women who had offices in that building. And they said they had a fan and a heater. Now this is I embarrassing. I know that was an, that was an, that made the, that made the news here about two or three weeks ago. You know. No. Well, I've only been in town four days. Else. I'm, I'm, all right, Carl, will you go down to City Hall with me and do... Uh, available right now. What? I just don't have any men available. I've got all the work I need for... The I just talked to a woman who was a shut-in. Now, Carl, you're running a plumbing business. You're going to have to be able to come out of the office. <laughs> That'd be nice to do if I could. Carl, what's your address? I'm going to come on down there. I'm down here at 20, 27, 23 Copeland Avenue. Okay. I'm going to come down there and talk to you later today. Well, like I say, I don't know what you're going to talk about. You, you probably need a whole new control system, which is Johnson Control. We did the job about 40 years ago, and they took over the installation from that time on, and I don't know what, what's wrong with the thing now. Now, you see, I've already found something out. Do what? I've already found something out. You just spit out some information there that's a, very important. Yeah, they really. they had somebody doing it. Somebody else took it over, and now it's falling apart and is broke. No, this this is what happened. You know, when you're in the when you're in the heating and air conditioning business, we don't do the control work. The control work is a big part of the system. Yeah. In other words, if you don't have a good control system, you can't make the compressor come on. You can't do this. You can't have. That's their problem. That, the mayor told happened. me. You know, I went around with the mayor. Yeah, he well, told well, me that the a simple job. The huh? That's not a simple job control-wise. No. I mean, if you don't have a good control pro- people, we had the best ones. Well, we, we want to buy the controls. We just don't want to pay for stuff we could do ourselves. But if, well, but the know, electronics we'll probably have to buy. You're not going to be able to do anything of that yourself unless you're a lot smarter than I think you are. S- one step at a time. Yeah. I'm one like a shark. A time, I get my teeth in a problem, and then I solve it. Well, I don't know. It's in the paper the other day where you're talking about spending about $2 million to get it fixed. you want to spend $2 million to get it fixed? No, but I'm yeah. going to find out what it really costs because I think the people that told me don't know what they're talking about. I haven't seen I haven't seen the installation, but we <coughs> put the installation about four I'm going to call Johnson Control. Four years ago. Uh, well, I'm going to gather information and solve the problem, Carl. I don't, I don't have time to gather the information with you. I'll I'm going to do it, I Carl. I ain't asked you to do nothing. I'm going to come by at lunch. When you ain't doing anything anyway. Are you Gallagher? Yeah. You're a hard nosed fellow to talk with. I know it. See you later. See? You know what? I, I'm going to have to go home and take Mary a nap Ellen. after this show. <coughs> this is Mary been Ellen, you think this is the world that's out there. Oh. And this is why I'm like I am. Because, see, he wanted to be more hard nosed than me. But I'm going to be more hard nosed because I'm going to win. I'm going to get this information. Don't and go I'm down gonna, there. I'm going to. I'm going to go to Johnson Controls. I'm but you're not going to go see Carl. Uh, I might. There's going to be a fight at Carl's later Carl. on. I'm not going down there to Carl referee the thing. Carl can't get out of his chair. Oh, he ain't no, going to beat me. Stop. We're going to get in trouble. I can tell. Carl. Gee whiz. They're not going to let us come back tomorrow. You keep this up. Does Carl? Pub, uh, does he run advertising on the show? You have to talk to Steve about that. No. Yeah, you go down there and sign Carl up. Yeah, uh, you've I made will. a friend already in Carl. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Well. Oh my goodness. We're ending on Mary Ellen Gallagher. Have we ended on nice terms? We had a civil conversation. Can we say that we're on nice terms as we end this Tuesday? Why? Well, if, what if our lives is a long story and this has been one chapter? But we're happy today. Are we? Are we not? I'm always happy. We're ha- and Mary Ellen, you'll be back next week. I hope so. You, gonna, you're not going anywhere. I'll have yeah. a heart attack later today. <laughs> Gallagher's going somewhere we don't know where. He'll be back tomorrow. If I'm back tomorrow, it'll be God's graces and not mine because I've done everything I can to have a heart attack. Don't you have a heart Now, see, if you have a heart attack tonight. 
I had a heart attack. I thought I was dead. I thought I was done with all of this. But this. don't have I one don't today. Even like this. We don't need that. I don't want. <coughs> you don't want that on your Wikipedia page. Here I the am. The last thing back you did was this, this show. Crazy, illogical world. Holy, ma don't go down to Carl's. Your blood pressure will go up. We're coming on tomorrow at 6 a.m. Come back with us tomorrow. I don't know who the guest is going to be. It's going to be Gallagher, and we'll add some names. Let's get Carl. Well, let's not get Carl. We don't need you and Carl down here fighting it out. All right. Okay. The See mayor. You tomorrow. Let's get the mayor. Uh, he's on vacation. WD.